scripture says, we are assured and know that God. I want everybody that got ears to hear, just stop for a moment and just, just say that. We are assured and know that God. Over here, now I got a good group over there. What? We are assured and know that God. What happens when you are assured and you know that God? That God what? That God anything. What happens when you know that you are assured and you know that God? What happens is you experience spiritual increase. You see, I'm trying to divorce your mind away from thinking about increase just as money and stuff and gain in that sense. And I'm trying to get you to, ooh, and this message just may do it, hopefully if we have time. I'm trying to get you into the original intent of how God wanted us to prosper. And it is not to find out who has the baddest bins and who has the baddest house and who has the baddest clothes and, and all of that kind of thing. Amen. See, spiritual increase, you get what you need when you need it. Amen. That God what? Is whatever you need. To receive spiritual increase, you must understand what you are, who you are, why you are. We get into trouble with where I'm going and how I'm going to get there. Because it involves a different approach in faith. Amen. Happy name and say, pay attention right now. Yeah, you better pay attention right now. Because we're going to go deeper so we can go higher. Okay? Because we're still talking about spiritual increase. What are you? Almost 99% of the mass of the human body is made up of six elements. Oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, calcium, phosphorus. Only about... 0.85% is composed of another five elements, potassium, sulfur, sodium, chlorine, chlorine, and magnesium. This is what you're made of. Um, and this is just in short. I mean, this is a, a I, I, it almost took me off my study because I was so interested in what we made of. Amen? So this is for the, for the children at school. This is good. You can take pastor's notes. They're good notes. Amen? But it's, a, it's, it's an exhaustive thing of what we're made of, because it depends. Are you talking about the anatomy? Are you talking about bones? Are you talking about, what are you talking about? We are wonderfully and complex and awesomely made when you look at how God has constructed us. When it comes down to it, we are made of dirt. Some of the same elements that's in the dirt, so are we. Doesn't sound glamorous, but it's the truth. What do, people dig all, you know, pe people dig for some of these elements all the time. Amen. Some of us need a little more nitrogen. That's what makes cars go fast. Is it, do you know that? Amen. And some of us kill it by some of the ham hocks that we eat. <laughs> no, seriously, our diet, our diets are slowing us down. What are you? Because you can want something but not understand the what and never get there. Because when you understand what you are, then you understand how to deal with what you are. So um, my son DJ, you know, he has a car, and um, he gets the mid-grade, and so I start letting him go get the high-grade in his car. And he likes that, because he said the car go faster. He feels a, a better response when you go for the high-grade. And so some of us are trying to save money, because you can't put no high-grade, you can't put low-grade fuel in a certain type of a car. Amen? And so it's the same thing with our bodies. We have to work at stop putting low-grade stuff on this wonderfully complex body that gave us. Your vision is too big for you to be feeding yourself things that will not help you go the extra mile or the distance, and that's going to be where you're going to really see some results. You're too tired all the time because you're eating the wrong stuff now. I have an announcement. Y'all ready for my announcement? Starting yesterday, I started a fast. The same type of fast I did years ago that changed my life. I started a 31-day fast for the church. Amen. So I'm on a fast right now. 31 days that my life may shift. Different, but, but in the same way as it did years ago. So years ago, I went on this fast. My life has not been the same since. I said my life has not been this. I've been on many fasts, but that one broke the back of something on my life. Relationship, finances, favor, 
That was the birth of what you see today. Confidence. That was the birth. I kid you not. It broke stuff off of me. I'm in the same kind of fast today because I see where I have to go, but I don't understand it fully. And I'm praying, but the Bible says I need to fast also. I see where you all need to go, and I thank God for y'all, and I love y'all, but we can't go where we got to go just doing what we're doing. And so I'm on a fast. And so I'm specifically targeting this congregation. And so if you see something getting shifted in your life, look, if you need to leave right now, just go ahead and leave because something's getting ready to shift in this place. Amen. I'm just letting you know right now. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. So I like I'm not playing with the devil no more trying to play cards with him to say, OK, who win that one? OK, OK, you get that member and I get this one. All right. No, 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 no. I'm getting all of y'all. I ain't making no deal. We all no, you ain't. No, no, no. You think you hear me, but you, you're really not hearing me because if I go back how I was before I win and that's it. That's, that's the way I thought. I win. That's it. There's no negotiation. There is no deal. I win. Somebody say I win. And that's it. That's the, that's the spirit of increase. And so I walked around like I win and that's it. And I start receiving like that. So all of a sudden I went from one level of income to this serious level of income. One, one moment I went to interviewing for jobs to interviewing people for jobs. Because why? Because I went on this mind shift. My mind shifted. Now, I didn't have any more um, experience. I just had confidence in we win if I come here. <laughs> oh, no, we win if I come here. I, I mean, are you hearing me? Somebody say, we win if I'm here. I, we win. And that's how you have to think. We win because I'm here. No, no, this place is up because I'm here. I, I, I can go to almost any basic church and we're going to win. Amen. We're going to praise God. We're going to praise God because I know how to do it by myself. Are, are you hearing me? See, we, there's certain places you go to where something just needs to be elevated just because you're there. But if you don't understand what you are, you will walk away. Listen to me. You'll walk away from a high moment and then you don't understand that people that are very gifted and talented go into this deep possible depression place where, not, where they're not doing what they love doing. See, we're in the show right now, but then you got to go into the business. And then you go into this slump trying to figure out what's going on with me because you're not doing the, 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 the see, I'm only going to preach for an hour, amen, less than an hour, amen. But then I got many hours to where I got to deal with, you know, funerals and and, and, and divorces and, and all kind of different stuff that the saints be doing in this church and out of this church. And some things I don't, I don't like doing all that. And that tries to bring you down. And so when that brings you down, then, you know, my, I, I, I have a proclivity to go towards the chunky monkey. Y'all know what that is, right? Yeah, some of y'all do crack and some of y'all smoke weed and some of y'all smoke cigarettes and, you know, some of y'all, yeah, huh? Some of y'all eat donuts, the bad ones, amen. And some of us eat Chunky Monkey. There's nothing wrong with eating Chunky Monkey. There's nothing wrong eating donuts, nothing wrong. But it is when you do too much and it comes against, it comes against my oxygen, my carbon, my hydrogen, my nitrogen, my calcium, my phosphorus. And now you're saying, I don't feel so well because you cannot put, you cannot put 87 in 91 tank and expect to go fast. How many of you are putting the 87 in the 91 tank, amen? Well, I'm just talking to you, I'm talking to you, I'm talking just to you. Because see, see, you're frustrated because you don't know what you are. What you are, what you are. I am a human being first born in the natural with environmental cooperation. What is environmental cooperation? When I came here, I just started breathing, I cooperated with the environment. I wasn't born on Mars because I couldn't breathe there. Amen. I wasn't born somewhere else. I couldn't, I couldn't, I, I, I wouldn't be compatible with that environment. And so what I am, so it says to me, oh God, it says to me that I am compatible, no matter what my skin color is, with this environment. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? There are only, um, there are only two um, answers to this, who you are. You're either a child of the living God, born again, renewed daily, living by faith, or you're a child of the world, you live by your feelings. 
It's only two. Who are you? Well, I'm a doctor over at Kaiser, or I'm an attorney at, you know. No, no, who? Who, who are you? I am a child of the living God. Amen. Yeah. Now, see, people need to understand it like this. I am a child of the living God. Or you need to just keep it real. I am a child of the world. And I'm telling you, some of y'all are really children of the world. I'm just going to keep it real with you. Why? Because you don't walk by faith. You walk by your feelings. I'm talking, it could be elder. It could be deacon. I don't care what you are. Amen. Pastor, it could be parish. I don't care what it is. This is not a, like a joke message. This is real talk right here. Because you can have a title but not have the answers and be sitting up struggling not knowing why you're struggling. Who are you? Are you really a child? Which means, this means if I'm a child, I am walking by my faith according to what God says. Or are you walking by what you feel? If you walk by what you feel... You are a child of this earth, which means you are relegated to the system that is made in the earth. I buy a house, I got to pay it off in 30 years, right? That's a system. You get paid X amount of interest, or you, you get charged interest, and then I have to keep paying on that. They give you credit cards, and you get whatever the case may be. You are relegated by Listen to me, and because I'm about to shift on you in a minute. I need you to hear me. You are a slave to this system. I'm, now, I'm not calling you a bad person because, because this is, you were born, you know, depending on your environment, this is all you know. To some of you, many of you, this may be the first time you've ever heard this ever in your life. And so you are, listen, you are accustomed to the system. See, and on your block, if you were the only one that had a 30-year mortgage, you'd be like, well, what's going on then? Wait, 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 wait. No, because everybody does. You think that that's the way to go. So First Lady and I walk around with people that just, like, pay houses off. So you heard me say, I'm paying my house off. I'm paying my house off. Why? Because I walk around people, when you talk about you got a mortgage and car notes, you feel funny around them. They ain't impressed because you got a car. You got a car note? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. That's why on everything I have, I pay over whatever the, the amount is. If I can't do that, I don't want it. I don't care if, by faith, if I got to pay $1 over it, I'm paying, every, I'm paying over whatever it is. I will never pay just what I got to pay. Because I come against this system because of who I am. I'm a child of the living God. And I'm working my way out of this old system, listen to me, into a new system. Because I'm born again. I was born into this earth. All of us born in this earth, the Bible says, we all will come short of the glory of God. And we were born into sin. But then we can be born again. And when I'm born again, I have new thoughts. I have new ideas. I have new things that are suggested to me. And so what happens, you come here and you get, quote unquote, born again. But then you don't come back to mature and then wonder why we don't have our own building. We can have our own building right now if everybody on the roster of our church came together and said, we want to do this. Everybody has to come together. It's going to take millions to do this in faith. Even if we get a building, it's going to take millions to keep it. We add it and pay it off. It's going to take millions to keep it up. But we got to know who we are. We got to know who we are. Yeah, watch this in, in Revelation. It says, I know your deeds, that you are neither cold, invigorating, refreshing, nor hot, healing and therapeutic. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm, spiritually, you are lukewarm, and it says spiritually useless. Amen? You are lukewarm. Did you hear that? Say? Spiritually useless. Oh, I come to church every week. You're still spiritually useless. Yeah, you, yeah, you may greet, but you're spiritually useless. You may teach, but you're spiritually useless. You may hold a title, but you're spiritually useless. Amen. We ain't playing church, right? Yeah. And so you've got to ask this question. Are you just lukewarm? And too many times we get this spirit of being lukewarm in this place. Oh, you're, you're useful for us carrying out church for today. But you're useless in the kingdom. 
I will vomit you out of my mouth, rejecting you with disgust. Because you say, this is what you say, oh, I'm rich and I have prospered and have grown wealthy and have need of nothing. And you do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked without hope and in great need. What is this? Maybe not even you here, but there are a lot of people out there. that got a lot of money, a lot of stuff. I'll be talking to people this week with that. Got a lot of stuff, but they, they need stuff. They are in need of something. Are you understanding me? They are in need of something. Are you understanding me? Yeah. But you can't help somebody if you don't know who you are. Yeah. Somebody said, who are you? Who are you? Why are you? Why are you? I'm an ambassador in the earth. I remember I, was, um, I went to this uh, meeting one time in Denver, Colorado, and um, this guy, he didn't know who I was, and because um, I was getting ready to give a presentation, and God walked up to me and says, why are you here? I mean, just rude. <laughs> just as, I said, well, I happen to be the Western Regional Vice President of this company. <gasps> oh, you're Mr. Barron? Yeah, I am. Now, who are you? And what do you do? That's a good feeling right there. I had to make sure I kept my spirit intact. <laughs> I had to make sure I kept my spirit intact. You're going to roll up on me and say, ask me, why are you here? to run the company, that's what I'm here for. See, when people, people will go and miscalculate and misjudge you when God elevates you to certain places. And you can't let your attitude, watch this, disqualify you out of that. There's a certain grace that comes with elevation. Are you understanding? See, some of you can't get elevated, spiritual increase, because you still got that cantankerous attitude. You would've went off on him in front of everybody else. <laughs> Are you hearing me? I, somebody said, I'm an ambassador in the earth. I'm an ambassador in the earth. So what does that mean? That means that I am set up in the earth. Now watch this. Now again, you may not know it, but you are an ambassador. Your house is an ambassador. It's an ambassador palace. Where you live is an ambassador palace, which means, watch this. If I go, we're going to Haiti, right? And so if I was the ambassador for the U.S. in Haiti, I'd be in Haiti, but I have U.S. accommodations. So whatever they're going on out there, right, whatever's going on out there, it ain't going on in here. Because the ship is coming here to bring all of my stuff. Do you all understand that? All right? Uh, I can go to Sudan. Then I, I'm from the U.S. I'm, in, I'm here in the U.S. and I'm going to Sudan because I'm the ambassador of Sudan. I'm from the U.S. And then I go and, I, and, and they set it all up for me so I can feel like I'm at home. Accommodations. I ain't worried about food. Now, they are out there. But in here, I got everything I need because I represent where I come from. You are a child of the living God. You have heavenly or should accommodations. You are an ambassador from heaven. Okay. Some of you are like, Pastor, I don't understand. that I came from heaven. What? The Bible says in Isaiah is that God said he knew you before you even were in your mother's womb. God knew who you were even before you hit this earth. God constructed you to be able to live in this earth. So he knew who you were. You were called, watch this. Oh my God. You were called even before you hit this earth to do something. You're just trying to hear that call again. And so now you're here. You are an ambassador. And so now you need, the ship apparently hadn't come to your house. Because you're living like everybody else. Maybe you didn't pick up the phone and say, I'm here. Maybe you didn't get there and, and, and send a, a text to say, I made it. Because you're still living like everybody else. You are an ambassador of Christ. It's good to know why you're here. Why, why, why are you here? Because I'm supposed to be the ambassador here. So why did you come here to set up shop like everybody else? Why are you struggling like everybody else? I love my church. Don't y'all love, love your church? 
No, no, I'm just talking because seriously, I'm not talking about just you. This is a message for the nations. Why are we living beneath our means? Because if we're supposed to be the ambassador, the home front is supposed to send something to us. Did you ever request for home front to send to you? As it is on earth, it shall be in heaven. <laughs> so why is it as it is in earth, it is in earth? As it is in earth, it shall be in heaven. Why? Because I'm just duplicating in heaven here on earth. Why are you here? I'm an ambassador. Why do you work here? I'm an ambassador. I'm checking things out. Why are you worried about what title you got? I don't care about no titles. I ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Yeah, president, nothing. I don't care. Amen. But what I do care about is that while I'm here, something's getting ready to change. So I'm, I'm, I'm scoping out. What are you doing? I'm scoping out what's going on. See, that's how you end up getting promoted because that's when the CEO is like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just probing around just to see what's going on. Don't you work in the mailroom? Yeah, I do. But I'm trying to see my route even before I go on it. And see, you down there complaining with everybody else because you forgot why you're here. You think you're there to try to pay, up to, to pay for Christmas coming up. <laughs> why are you here? I am to be a blessing to God and man. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. I'm here to be a blessing, to use my talent, time, and treasure. I'm here to be a, somebody say, I came here to be a blessing. I came here to be a blessing. Yeah, no, no. Some of y'all came to church for different reasons. But you should have come to be a blessing. Why? Because you are only a, uh, the percentage of the rest that's going to come. If we all had the same attitude that we should have, why are you here? I came here to be a blessing to God and man. We change right now. Why are you here? I am so others can be. I am so others can be. I had, a, I had a stint in my marriage to where I was so mad at my wife because it's like, man, she's just going and she just gets to do it. It's got free for everything, God. I got to be dealing with all this stuff, God, and just she just go and, and be saying all this. I ain't saying it good now, but I was just mad. Somebody said he was just mad. And then God had to minister to me, you are so she can be. I was so busy trying to make her understand what I'm going through. He says, why does she, she's a woman. What does she need to understand what a man is going through? She knows what she's going through. She, she knows she's going through as a woman. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. And so as a woman, and so even if you're a single woman, there should be men in your life because there's things that a woman should be doing and there's things that a man should be doing. I know some of y'all, you know, got, you know, big time women's lib type stuff. But I hope y'all know, I, I talk with love, and I'm not like chauvinistic or anything like that. But there's certain things a woman should do, and there's only certain things a woman can do. And there's certain things a, 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 a man should do. I don't know, some of y'all like, a woman can do what a man can do, and a man can do what a woman can do. And that kind of thinking has put us in all kinds of problems and troubles. Look, 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 look. My wife will go and grab a screwdriver better than I will sometimes. And girl, if you, can, if you can screw it in, screw it in, girl, if you want to do that. So I ain't talking about that. So don't, don't bring it down to those levels. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah, don't bring it. I, I, I'm talking about there's something about chastity, about a woman being a woman. There's something of a man being a man. There's something about that. And we have gotten confused about that. And I'm telling you, you can look with me in that tone of voice if you want to. But I'm telling you, look at the world that we're in right now. Whatever, I watch so many times men just standing around and women opening doors. There used to be a day you could never do that. My wife can open a door all day long if she wants to. But it's, it's the whole thought process of spiritual increase. Spiritual increase is that, no, I'm taking care of my wife. Well, I am so she can be. I am so my kids can be. I am so you all can be. You are so I can be. Where am I going? We probably would not go if we knew what the full journey required. This is the question that gets to where we start messing up. If we knew where we had to go, we probably wouldn't make the journey. Are you hearing me? How am I going to get there? When God gives you an assignment, it will always seem like you don't have enough to fulfill it. When God tells you to do something, it will always look like you don't have enough to do what God says to you. Not sometimes, it will always look like you don't have enough. So you get there by faith. 
We just explain that. You keep walking until God brings the person that, ha that is assigned to you to come bring you what you need. That's why some people bring to you what you need. You don't even know them. It could be not even just money and stuff like that. It could be a word. So, has anybody just walk up to you to say, you know what? God just had you on my heart. They had an assignment for you. Amen? It's called a prophetic gift that comes to you. Y'all getting that? Natural increase affects only the natural environments. Spiritual increase affects all environments, natural and spiritual. Did y'all get that? Natural increase affects only natural environments. You young business people in here, it only affects natural environments. Spiritual increase, though, affects everything. You get the natural, but you also see that there's something spiritual going on here also. If and when you receive Jesus as your Savior, you gain access to spiritual environments called the kingdom of God. Amen? We're going to land the plane. Listen to this. If and when you receive Jesus as your Savior, you gain access to spiritual environments called the kingdom of God. One more time. If and when you receive Jesus as your Savior, you gain access to spiritual environments called the kingdom of God. So then you cannot gain the kingdom of God if you have not received Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. The Bible says all of this sounds like hogwash to you. The Bible says this sounds like, you know, and some of you that have, you've opened up your mouth and received, but you don't really believe. And so all of this stuff sounds, sounds ridiculous. Look at me. Look at me. I think y'all know I don't play games. There's a place called the spirit of uh, kingdom, the kingdom of God here on this earth. We are supposed to be ambassadors over it. Amen? Yeah, and there all your needs are met. Most of us requested salvation from Jesus, but lack maturity in Christ that's keeping us away from the benefits of the kingdom. So there's benefits, but we're not receiving them because we have not made a decision to mature. So we come to church, but we're not maturing. And then we stay in this place of lack trying to figure out what's going on. So we play, um, we play um, on the fence to where, we, like we said before, we're kind of hot and cold at the same time. We're over here playing in the world, trying to make our way, but then over here trying to be a good Christian. And it's not meant, and it's not designed for you to do that. When you become a Christian, you get benefits of becoming a Christian. So I'm a part of a country club. I get the benefits of being in the club. Amen. And so I try, if I can, to get all the benefits. One of them is, some of you ever been to lunch with me? I go in there, I order what I want, amen? And then I don't have to pull out no money and nothing like that. That's one of the benefits. I don't have to pull out any money. I'm part of the club. I ain't gonna pull out any money right then. People are like, oh, do I, do I need, no, you ain't gonna do nothing. Oh, that's tight. Yeah, because it's one of the benefits. That's natural. In the kingdom, there are times to where, I, in the kingdom, I don't have to pull out money. I will go somewhere and eat, and somebody else will pay for it. Sometimes I don't even know who it is. Kingdom benefit. We have gotten clear instructions on how to receive in the spirit, yet we ignore it, leaving us in a position of wanting when we already have. The Bible says, seek the kingdom of God above all else. Seek the what? Did y'all hear that? He says, seek the kingdom of God above all else. What you been seeking for? No, no, look at me when I say this. Are you seeking for a new house, a new relationship, a new something? Why are you seeking stuff and things and people and you haven't sought first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Don't seek for another thing without seeking God's kingdom first. And his righteousness, what does that mean? His way of doing. He said he, he told you straight up. And you sitting there trying to figure out what's going on. The natural habitat of the spirit of increase is in the kingdom. The natural habitat of the spirit of increase is in the kingdom. So that's why God says, seek first the kingdom. Get saved, seek first the kingdom. Then you won't be going through all this mess that you're going through as Christians. That's why Paul had to sit and write all these letters. What y'all doing? Don't, are you not seeking first the kingdom so you can know how to walk in this Christian life? Don't you know that we've already made available for you all that you need? Don't you know that you don't have to worry about food, clothing, housing? You don't have to worry about that. What you have to do is just make sure that you bring people to the kingdom. But the devil got you worried about everything else except what you're supposed to be here doing. 
You're worried about what you're going to eat. You're worried about what you're going to wear. You're worried about all these different things. So when a seed is sown for like our 40,000, then it gets choked up by the cares of this world. And God said it shouldn't have never. You should have gotten your 60-fold this time. But I got choked up because you're so concerned about things you shouldn't be. You got men leaving their wives just because they don't like them no more? Well, I should have been gone. <laughs> you don't leave your wife because you don't like her. Woman, you don't leave your husband because you don't like him. That's part of marriage. Oh, my God. Y'all better quit looking at me like that. I didn't write the Bible. The natural habitat of the spirit of increase is in the